Well, the day is finally here, and Kung Fu Panda has returned to the silver screen for its next and presumably last installment. And I know there's been some recent concern with DreamWorks in the past few years delivering a few massive hits, but also a couple of duds. So many people are wondering, will Kung Fu Panda 4 live up to the hype of its predecessors? Will it have audiences walking out of the theater yelling skadoosh? Or would it leave the audience with a bit of a whimper? And after seeing it twice this weekend, I can assuredly say that it is more skadoosh than whimper. But I also gotta be honest when I say that although it is not a bad movie, it is probably the weakest of all the installments. But let's get into that. But just a moment to talk about the last three films. I think they are all fantastic. I think one was incredible. Two is probably my favorite and I think the best out of the trilogy. Three was weaker than one and two, but still really lived on the legacy of Kung Fu Panda. And now we come to the fourth one where I think this is a worthy sequel, but it does have a lot of stuff dragging it down, but it is still a worthy sequel. So let's start off with the good things about it. First of all, I love what they continue to do with Poe's story. I was really scared that they were gonna flanderize Poe because that tends to happen when you get on installment four or five and six and all that. The characters just start acting not like themselves. And I really don't think that that happened here. There was a couple scenes that felt a little out of character for Poe, but considering what he was going through, people in that situation tend to not act like themselves. So it made sense. So good on you for that. And then we have the new character of Jen, and I thought she was handled really well too. I thought Aquafina did a really good job with her performance. I was afraid it was gonna be a little too brash and in your face like a lot of her other characters have been, but she was reserved when she needed to be. She was emotional when she needed to be. She did a really good job with the character, and I found the character pretty engaging, even though it was kind of obvious where the character was going. There were a few twists and turns with her that I really didn't see coming, but I thought she was a good addition to the Kung Fu Panda universe. The animation, as always, was absolutely spectacular, and especially the way they handled the chameleon and how she transformed into other characters and other animals. That was just really cool to see, and I thought the villain as a whole, the chameleon, I thought overall, she was good. And of course, I gotta mention a few musical things. Number one, Jack Black singing Britney Spears. Didn't know I needed this in my life, but yes! And there will be a cover of that coming to the main channel very soon. Then also, they did an instrumental version of Crazy Train halfway through the movie. I don't know if anybody caught it, because I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but I loved that. I was like, wait, are they do- They are! Ah, they are! And this is not a spoiler because they mentioned it in the trailers, uh, but we do see some of the villains from the past films return. And I will be honest, I thought that what we saw in the trailer was going to be all that we saw in the movie. And I had no expectations for really seeing the past villains that much, but I was pleasantly surprised by how much we got from one of them. And it actually was really impactful. So that was really cool. And I really love the continuing idea of Poe having to push himself out of his comfort zone to continue to grow and be a better and more well-rounded kung fu master and overall person. I think that's really cool. And this movie continued that trend and I think in a believable and uh, really welcome next step. And also these kid bunnies who I said were driving me nuts in the trailer, they actually weren't bad in the movie. They were used just enough, they weren't annoying, although they could have easily crossed that bridge. And also, I gotta give credit, this is the first movie that included that screaming goat joke that I think actually did it well, and I actually laughed at it. That's the first time I've laughed at that dumb goat screaming joke. Thor Love and Thunder, take notes! But now let's get to the not so strong elements. Uh, remember how I said there was no flanderization for Poe? Well, um... Unfortunately, there was one character who didn't get away from the flanderization, and that was poor Mr. Ping. Mr. Ping definitely saw some flanderization here. Luckily, it's not the whole movie, but enough that you noticed and sitting there going, Oh, that, oh, okay, y'all went a little too far with that. Also, there is this whole B-plot that involves Mr. Ping and Lee that, although not bad and is handled pretty well, Feels like it 
really shouldn't be there and feels a little forced. It's mostly there for comedy and granted, they actually got some of the biggest laughs in the movie, at least out of me. But when it came to the payoff for it, I don't know how well it really landed and it seemed a little far-fetched on how they started their B-plot in the first place in my opinion. It feels a little out of left field. But it's not horrible by any means, just kind of didn't feel like it needed to be there. And I'm sorry Furious 5 fans, you're not going to have a lot in this one as the Furious 5 were barely in this movie. I mean, they were there. They didn't really say anything, but they were there. And I, I get why it would have been a lot to try to juggle all of these stories, but it does feel a little weird not having them involved to any capacity other than, you know, showing up for like a minute or two. And I do have some issues with the villain. Like I said before, she is good. She's not a bad villain. But I do wish there was more from her because all the villains we've had so far in Kung Fu Panda, they've all had compelling reasons that they did what they did and normally involves a rather intricate backstory that helps us understand where they're coming from but then also see their devious nature. We don't really get that here. I mean, yes, she has a backstory that she briefly mentions in uh, one sentence and I'll tell you now because she says it really early in the movie and it's not really a big spoiler she just said that she had some kung fu masters in her past tell her that she was too small to learn kung fu that's it and that's a good reason if master mantis wasn't a thing so this kind of doesn't feel like it makes sense in the world that they live in so I don't really get where this is coming from and they even make a point later in the film that Poe and the Chameleon are actually very similar. But I sat there going, are they really? Because I don't know enough about the Chameleon to really know that. I could see that with some other villains, especially Lord Shen. But I don't get this one. I mean, I get what the movie was trying to say with that line, but I don't feel like they made the point as clearly as they think they do. And... I'm a little disappointed we don't have the same emotional moments that we got in 1, 2, or even 3. 1 and 2, they had incredible emotional moments, especially Poe with the raindrop in the second one. Are you kidding me? Third one wasn't quite as strong as 1 or 2, but still had some decent stuff, and I'd say this one has some decent stuff, but even less great than what we saw in the third movie. Not bad, but I did want a lot more from it, and... I I think that's the best way to sum up how I feel about the entire movie. It was good for what it was. What they gave us was not bad. I just wish there was a little bit more, especially for a name like Kung Fu Panda. Now granted, this was so good, I'm saying they ended it with a high note, but I'm also saying do not make another one. Do not make a fifth one. Please don't, because I, I think if it's any less than this, it won't be a worthy follow-up. This is like the minimum you can do to still be a good follow-up. Let's end it here. Let's end on a strong note. Don't do any more. But I gotta say, I thought it was worth the time that I took to go see it in theaters. In fact, I enjoyed it so much the first time I wanted to see it again. The same day. And I did. And I, I don't regret it. So if you love the first three, you're probably going to enjoy this and think it is a good movie. If you didn't enjoy the first three, this is probably not going to change your mind. So, let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Did you enjoy it? Do you feel like I did? Do you have some other thoughts and opinions? Let me know. And, uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!